Hey folks, Robbo here. Cheers. I just thought I'd do a run through of my camping setup with my D22. Oh, thank you. Uh, look, it's not the best setup. Um, I've got an old truck, but it's still pretty reliable. And I've done the best I can with what I've got. And I like watching YouTube and just getting ideas off what everyone else is doing. And I thought I'd just do the same with my truck. Start up the front. Uh, 2012 D22. And from what I've read and heard, and quote me if I'm wrong, the 2012 D22 accidentally got the dual cab, uh, the dual battery. It was supposed to go into the D40, which is the six cylinder. But they accidentally put it in the D22, the smaller four-cylinder truck. Uh, so thank you. But I didn't really use it until we wanted to go to the Cape and was thinking about using uh, car fridges. And this was set up with an old battery. Um, didn't, wasn't wired up to anything. So went to A1 Battery Pro. Told them what I wanted, which was a deep cycle and wanted to try and put it in under the bonnet can't put an AGM in there because of the heat so the best they could do was a 70 amp hour uh, I think it's some sort of gel battery it's a deep cycle still but it's not an AGM and it's the best suitable for under the bonnet 70 amp hour it's been good but I'll go through some problems maybe uh, when we get back to the end of the truck bought a uh, an isolator uh, now that was just off eBay, uh, 150 amp isolator, uh, wired it up to my cranking battery. Um, because 2012 it's got a, uh, a, a smart alternator, so needed a um, 100 amp fuse to the smart alternator. And then I did an inline fuse, I think that's a 50 amp inline fuse. Um, for the uh, deep cycle battery going to the back where we have all the power. So ran it through all the way down to the bottom, ran it underneath the truck. And I just put it as, as, as most protective as I could underneath the, the truck with a bit of uh, conjugate protective sleeving and brought him out into the tray from there Ran it underneath this lip here, all the way to the back. So in up underneath here. And then put it onto a distribution box from Australia Direct, uh, the kick-ass. And that cost me about 90 bucks about three years ago. And it's been really good. Uh, so it's fused with a 15 amp. It's got your cigarette lighter. USB. And most importantly, an Anderson plug. Uh, so what I was doing is um, using an 89 litre Evercool dual fridge, fridge freezer, um, which is a really, really good fridge. However, super thirsty on battery juice. In the 70 amp hour, it was fine when it was driving because all I do is I just put the, the fridge into the Anderson plug and run off the alternator. So when I was driving, I'd have the freezer at like super, super cold, minus 15, the fridge at one or two, so you'd have crispy cold beers. And that was great. But when you stop, and you stop for a day or two, my 200 amp um, solar panel just couldn't keep up with the fridge. And th this isn't it. This is another fridge. Couldn't keep up with the 89 litre ever, uh, ever cool. Uh, it was just too, too thirsty. So what did I do? I went and bought, I needed another, I needed another battery source because the 70 amp, once I go off grid, just wasn't enough. So I bought a 115 amp hour battery from King's, got it for about 270 bucks with a battery box. And then I just ran the uh, fridge off the battery box once we went off grid so I'd use I'd use the distribution box for when I'm driving up there 
because that's free power really when you're running off alternator. And then once we uh, turn off the engine, I'd put that onto the battery box. And that works really, really well. And then I'll just put the 200 amp, uh, sorry, 200 watt solar, uh, solar panel onto the battery box to get charged through the window. Cool. However, the battery box wasn't hooked up with the alternator, with the, with the cranking uh, battery, or my 70 amp. So when I'd get home, or if I um, wanted to change camps, I've still got a half used battery that wasn't getting any charge until we would stop and put it on the 200 watt um, solar panel, but then I still was using it to try and crank the big battery. So uh, what I did there was I bought a um, 110 watt solar panel, a Flexi from Kings with an MPPT regulator. Um, now let's go with the regulators first. The MPPT regulator is a little bit more expensive, but wowzers big difference between the uh, the generic and the cheaper one which is the PWM now the PWM comes on all your usual solar panels that you buy which is that one there which works fine honestly however I would only get maybe 13.6 oh, 13.8 volts out of that solar panel but I'm getting out of this MPPT I'm getting 14.7 volts in the sun um, and that cuts out at 14.7 so it doesn't get any higher uh, so you don't do any damage to your battery but even I, I've noticed with the PWM regulator you heavily rely on direct sunlight um, but the MPPT it'll just pick up glare uh, so um, it gets the, the most out of your panel uh, now the 110 which is only half the the wattage of the 200 and I, I reckon I'm getting Just as just as good performance. I did have the panel up on here but That basket was so loud and flapping after you go 60k So I've stuck it up on the roof of the canopy and it works perfectly Canopy uh, wasn't on when I first bought the truck got it off Facebook marketplace 220 bucks um, and it funny enough it, it wasn't even off a, a Navara it was off a 1996 Mazda Bravo and it fits within like five mil so it's a perfect fit because uh, TJM and ARB 3600 bucks can't afford it 220 bucks got it painted struts um, window tint uh, and then I just wired it up myself but before we go inside, I put some external Anderson plug outlets. Um, so you don't have to open up the, the window. You can just plug into the outside of your canopy, which works really, really well. Right now I'm using it for the solar panel, as you can see. But I just put Anderson plugs on the outside and then just put these covers on it. Now on eBay, I found these under, if you search um, Anderson plug trailer covers um, I think they're about 20 bucks you can see they're spring loaded uh, dust proof waterproof and they work really really well so I got a couple of them and I've got another one on the other side as well for a external light that I've put up on the basket uh, and then I tacked into my distribution box and ran wires up the top here with the dimmer where is it? That goes on an LED strip. I just got that from Super Cheap Auto. And that's a really small strip and that lights up the whole area. So it's really, really good. And I'll put it on a dimmer. And then you can see on the above the windows, you can see the leads that I've done for the same thing off that same wiring from the uh, the 70 amp hour ring for the plugs outside and this lighting doesn't take any power at all so the 70 amp once you go off grid can keep up with the lighting um, I just can't use it for the fridge when you turn your truck off it's just too much catch anything um, beef jerky beef jerky <laughs> yep 
Uh, so that's pretty much it for inside. On the outside, never use those shower tents. They're just impossible to try and put back together. And Kings, and I know Kick-Ass have also got these, but Kings have got these shower awnings. And they just fold up into like an awning up the top. And I use that with a shower kit. And you've got a shower outside. It's perfect. The kids love it. Just put it into a bucket, put a hot billy wall of water in, and you run the lead through and into my battery box. Uses hardly any power, but that's perfect. And that's something new that we've just put on. We used to run a bloody uh, a gazebo. A gazebo, it's like 30 kilos. I'd have to put it up onto the onto the basket, so it was really hard to put on. And we already had, we already had this awning off the side of the truck when we went to the Cape. This is a Ridge Rider from Super Cheap Auto. Uh, works really well, and I love that it's got a, a sewn in LED strip that as well I just run in and just chuck into either the distribution box or I put it into the 70 amp the 70 amp um, Anderson plug that runs for the 70 amp because it uses hardly any power so this is really really good so what I did was just buy some Kings awnings walls um, and you can either put them down onto the onto the ground or we just pole it we just pole it and we get so much more area undercover than the gazebo the gazebo is only three by three and that's three meters long by there so it was perfect anyway i think that's about it that's a pretty general overlay of of what we've got now uh, i wouldn't change anything can't afford to uh and i don't love kings i'm just tight ass however king's products are pretty decent uh for their price i'm pretty happy with it Anyway, I hope you find it useful. If not, I just like looking at YouTube and just maybe getting ideas on how people do things and all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, hopefully someone can find some benefit out of it. Got any questions, send us a reply. But thanks.